We are on, man. Awesome, dude. Yo, dude, I'm uh, I'm excited that we connected, man. Uh, are you feeling better? Absolutely, a thousand times better. I came down and lost my voice uh, the other day. It was uh, it was ridiculous. Um, was that just because of uh, too much podcasting? Absolutely, it was actually. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm banking a bunch of a podcast right now, so I'm just banking them and um, right. releasing them once a week. So um, I'm like doing two or three a day. And um, it's just too much. I still haven't fully recovered. I feel great, but my voice is still recovering. A lot of hot tea. Yeah, yeah, hot tea is what's up, man. You should, uh, you should get on this. Right now, I'm drinking a, a turmeric boost, man. You throw some turmeric, some ginger, some black pepper, some lemon, some honey, and some really? water together. That, uh, that, that takes care of you, bro. I'm gonna try that shit. I have, actually have turmeric in my uh, ingredient cabinet, so yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm I'm gonna try that shit out. How have you been, sure. man? Um, man, no, no big complaints. Uh, I've just been been living life in Bali, man, doing doing the thing and uh, and enjoying myself. Matter of fact, you know what? Why don't you introduce yourself to folks? Let them know exactly who you are and what you're doing, so they understand, you know, the whole Bali thing <laughs> for context. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, uh, my name's Tommy Joyner. I've been living internationally for seven years um sorry i've got got some little friends in the background here but no, you're um, good you're good <laughs> i've been living internationally from seven for about seven years now i'm originally from uh colorado i grew up in a small town called carbondale which is near aspen um around the age of like 25 i, I left the states uh to teach english uh abroad in south korea that was my first my first move uh internationally and from there i figured out how to start a business online and uh support myself so um i've i've lived all over the world um in a few kind of like stable places uh medellin colombia was was uh my home base for the longest period of time for about four and a half years up until last july i've also lived in sri lanka uh barcelona uh as well as thailand and bali for for significant chunks of time so i'm in bali right now this is the current home base Right. And uh, yeah, man, I support myself online, uh, doing, doing some, some online things. <laughs> We're gonna get to those online things in a second, but the travel, like, what made you leave Colorado? What made you feel like you had to go, you know, out the country to really find yourself? Um, man, yeah, Colorado's a, it's a dope place. Like, uh, I'm very blessed to be from a place that I enjoy going back to. Um, you know, I've got some friends, uh, on this lifestyle that are from, uh, some different States that I won't mention cause I don't want to put them down, but they're sure. not excited to go home. Um, <laughs> and I think that's, uh, that's kind of shitty, but when you grow up somewhere, regardless, man, it's like, uh, it's like you, you, you just get used to whatever your environment is. And, right. um, you know, if you grow up, uh, a, a somewhat privileged person, like I did, I think you have a responsibility to take that one step further and to, you know, to act on like where you've been able to start in life and like really level that up um, and see like what else you're made of. Because if you're put in a place where you have the ability to serve or impact uh, or, you know, go deep spiritually speaking and, and figure out what's inside of you and you've been given a platform for that, like, I think you have a responsibility to, to go investigate that. So when I was living in Colorado, more or less, like I felt that kind of bubbling up and I just felt like an urge, like, uh, I just wanted to, to go find more, man. So actually I had, I had a bunch of different, uh, scenarios, like failed to launch type of things. I, I earlier on when I first left Colorado, I just, I just got in my car and drove to New York. I lived on couches there for like four or five months. And then I ended up getting a job in Chicago, actually, and lived there for like a year before I, I actually went to Korea. So um, there were like various steps along my journey. But yeah, man, I think that's that kind of sums up at, at least the, the rationale behind why I originally left. Do you feel that um, the regular nine to five just wasn't for you? Yeah, no way, man. I mean, um, yeah, absolutely. It was not. And I so. <clears throat> yeah, it, it was not, but I didn't fully know that until I like really explored it. So I didn't get my first job for myself, man, until I was, until I was 25, basically. Like my dad got me my first job out of college. Like I didn't really have to work. Uh, I wasn't one of those kids that had to like get, uh, like pay for his own car and, you know, work 
Brazil and shit in high school. Like I, I learned a lot of skills like later in life. I was kind of stunted. Um, but when I like really got out into the real world, I thought maybe like I, I wanted to like explore the nine to five and like kind of climb up the corporate ladder. But once I finally got my first job and I worked there for a year and I crushed it and kind of got to a level where I could see myself on a trajectory, I was just like, no, nah, this is definitely not for me. Um, I, I kind of like fast forwarded like what my life was going to look like uh, in a few years. And I, I didn't, I didn't like what that, <laughs> what that was telling me. So um, yeah, I actually got to a point physically during uh, that job that I had uh, where I, I couldn't actually go into the office anymore. Like I couldn't, I couldn't actually physically be there. I felt sick. Um, so, you know, when you're experiencing things like that, I think, I think, you know, it's not for you. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, I kind of, come probably cut from the same cloth as well. Like is did retail management my whole, my whole career and, um, fell into it, but was never something I really wanted to do. Um, cause the money was decent. It was pretty good. And even to this day, I feel like I should, I shouldn't be doing that. I should be doing what I'm doing now. Like talking to you, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. and you know, and, um, I, what made you, you said, you know, you felt sick going into, to work. And I, I understand that feeling. I'm sure a lot of people listening have that feeling as well. <laughs> And then fear tends to either stop you or push you forward. So when was that moment that you felt like, I have to go? I just have to go take a chance on myself? Man, um, you know, I think it started before, like, I left that job. There's, like, a, I think it was, like, there's, like, little little steps that we can take. And, like, um, I, I wasn't necessarily good at defining, like, what I wanted as an end goal. I still probably... <laughs> still probably am not you know i'm still definitely like searching and i'm still on my journey in terms of like what i'm what i'm seeking that's going to bring me ultimate fulfillment um but but when i first left colorado um you know when i just got in my car and 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 i left um it was so was your question what made me go yeah what made you go what made you like just say you know what screw this fuck this shit i'm going to go ahead and can you say you, you came from a family of privilege? And you had yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, and so, so what made you feel like you know what? I really had to just kind of hold my own. That's pretty much what you're saying, right? You want to go hold yeah. your own and, and show off, like what you can do. But what what made you kind of what when when did that bubble to the surface? Like yo, I really have to just go out there. Yeah, it's a good question, man. So, um, I think it was like so. Yeah. So when I wasn't, well, it, I mean, there was two, there was two steps and like getting over that fear that you talked about as well. Like it's progression and like, you can take, like, you can make moves, you make a sequence of moves and every move that I've made in my life has leveled me up in such a way that I've been able to overcome more and more fear. And then beyond kind of like this new level of self-confidence and develop a new mind state that's gotten me to the next level that will ultimately carry me forward to whatever. So I think at the age of like 24 or 25, I just felt like I just felt like I, I just saw that I was going to be very mediocre if I didn't make moves. So got to a point, And like, I think, you know, it's like uh, Drake says, man, like, <laughs> if you ain't got it, you ain't got it. The theory is brilliant. Like, mm -hmm. what if you do and you feel it like you're just going to go, man? It's like not something that you can necessarily explain. Like, once you feel it and you're like, I got to go and you fucking act on that, like you're gone. And, and if, 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 if you don't, then like, that's not your life path. So there's something like in my destiny that just like, I was able to connect with every time that I've made these moves that just takes me and says, no, like, you know, this doesn't feel right. I'm out. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Like, did you have a support system? Did your family understand? Did they disown you? Did they feel like you were just out of your fucking mind? Um, I had a really interesting interaction with my dad, like when I was leaving Colorado for the first time, like I was pulling out of my driveway. I had like six or seven grand saved up and was driving to New York with like no place to live and like really no job or no plan. But I figured I, that would give me like a nice cushion to at least like, you know, make a jump. And uh, when I saw him in the driveway, he looked at me, it was like, you're not going to New York with no job. Like, are you some, he said something like that. And I was like, right. yeah, actually, actually it's exactly what I'm doing. And he was like, that's fucking stupid or something like that. <laughs> like, he just was like, yeah, good fucking luck, you idiot. 
And I was just like, all right, thanks, Dad. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so That's I, enough fathers. Fathers are real, man. <laughs> dude, and it's like, I have such a better relationship with my dad now, but like, there's something to be said for like, like leaving the nest, just saying fuck you to your dad and then like and then reconciling that relationship as you get older it's like it's like a i think it's i think it's a real thing you know <laughs> it's part of like the, the father son hero's journey but um that's part of yeah, you man. becoming a man you, you, you're leaving you really said i'm taking my manhood now dad and that's it you can't tell me what the fuck to do no more you know yeah absolutely dude. and those are like very yeah that was like a very definitive moment man because that was like that was a release um, for me. And then, yeah, and then there was more steps. And then when I told him I was moving to South Korea to teach English and maybe never coming back to the United States, that was another thing. I was I was frightened to tell my dad these things because you want, like, your parents' approval and, like, he was not approving of, like, the moves that I was making. But at the same time, I was like, dude, can't you see that, like, I'm not going to even have the success that you want for me if i don't do this shit it's a really weird it's a really weird thing they want you to stay safe but like they don't realize that they're hurting you by trying right. to keep you there absolutely that that but you know what i think it's because it's that that mindset you know from generation to generation you know you you're supposed to find that 30 year, that 30 year job you're supposed to retire with your pension you know that's having that safety net and that being comfortable like you said earlier and um i think the newer generations now they don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> you know, it's all about, we know our life is short as human beings on this planet. And it's literally like, you know, living your best life. <laughs> you know, like, how are you going to live your best life? And I think you chose that, which is fantastic. And sometimes parents become envious because they couldn't do it or they didn't do it. Right? Um, yeah, that's actually a really good point. You know, and that, and, that, and that gets hard. And as a parent, I'm a parent as well. And, you know, if my kids tell me they're going to do something, I say, go, go after it. Go fucking do it. It's your life. You know, the same way if someone wants to be a crackhead, doesn't mean I'm a bad parent. You just make a wrong choice. <laughs> you just become a fucking crackhead. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's not your father's parenting skills. And sometimes parents think about that as well. Like, hey, maybe I did something wrong. But no, like, you really felt in you. Like, you know, because of their teachings, because of what they taught you, you're actually using what they taught you. That's why you left. You know what I'm saying? Uh, deep down inside, that's what it comes down from. So they actually did a, a great job. They they didn't have the, the foresight to really see, yo, Tommy's about to be gone. <laughs> you know, He's about to be out of here. And they probably didn't expect that to be that. So for you to feel that sick at work, that says a lot. Like You really knew it's deep down inside. Like you were ready to go. Yeah, man. And I've felt that with other things too, relationships and otherwise. Um, and I think eventually, like, you just got to pay attention to that, man. And I mean, if you don't, like, I think it literally, I think it literally kills you. Like, I think it manifests disease inside of your body. I yeah. think that's how cancer starts. Like, I think, I think that's how autoimmune disorder, disorders are developed. Like, I think energy is, is huge, man. Mm -hmm. I really believe in that. So, like, whatever I can do to just make sure that, like, mine's as cleansed as possible. Like, that's, that's just, like, the path I try to follow. But back to your point real quick about, like, uh, your parents kind of like putting that in you and like, you know, teaching you these things or setting an example that you ultimately end up following. Uh, and then ironically, like kind of being upset about that. Yeah, man, I grew up like my dad is an entrepreneur. Like he's a, a blue collar entrepreneur. He had a concrete construction firm. Um, so it's way different than the, the path that, that I followed. But I mean, I definitely saw him like do things his own way. Like he didn't give a fuck. And he's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> to a fault maybe but uh but at least like i was just like you know i'm i'm gonna do whatever i want to you know so that was that was in me <clears throat> yeah he, he gave you that fucking gangster gene your father yeah. was fucking gangster he was like yo i'm gonna do it my way lo and behold you have that gene <laughs> and you know it's, it's tough when you when you see it in your face <laughs> you know what i'm saying and it's, and it's a part of you as your child doing it it's it's amazing that's a great great story man like <laughs> You know, um, you make the move to Bali, or you make the move to you know to South Asia, right? And mm -hmm. how was that? That because you you went there obviously not knowing anyone, right? Um, uh, going to a different country, other side of the world, it's totally different from the states. And how did how was your adjustment? Like, what did that look like? Yeah, man, and it's not just different from. 
like the states because you can go to south america or latin america or even europe and like those places are different than the states but like there's things that are like familiar when you go to asia man like even as connected as the world is now like i'm literally on the other side of of the world it's 10 30 in the morning here which right. is you know you're ready you're ready like, in the future <laughs> I'm, in, yeah, I'm, in the I'm still <laughs> I'm celebrating Valentine's Day already, man. Um, <laughs> so it's uh, it's crazy, man, because like everything over here is it's literally like it's it's like the inverse of everything in the United States in a lot of different ways, man. So like uh, and there's developed countries over here, like very, very developed that like I think people are people are a little bit naive and ignorant even to this day that like, you know, if you go to South Korea, like I, I lived in South Korea, people people the average american has no idea what that really even means but i show up in south korea it's this crazy you know advanced society it was like being dropped into um yeah some some place that was like uh like like the states but better in terms of like their infrastructure and transportation and like everything that i was seeing around it just felt like very clean and very connected um right. but they spoke an entirely different language and no one spoke English when I got there. And I didn't speak any Korean by the time I, I landed. So it was like intimidating as hell, dude. Like I remember just being in the airport and like literally being in the airport and like walking around uh, after after I picked up my bag from baggage claim for like 30 minutes. Like I knew the bus that I had to go to, uh, kind of, but like right. I was too scared to like even interact with people and like point around. Like I, I was like, I was so fear-based that like I couldn't even... I couldn't even interact <laughs> at first, man. Wow. It was so scary. Damn, but that it's scary and probably exhilarating at the same time, though, because you're you, you're there. You're gonna have to fucking figure it out. Um, mm. And you're right, though. You know, going. You know, I think you're absolutely right. You know, the states we we're, we're so we're in this fucking bubble, right? And the rest of the world is traveling back and forth, going to different countries and stuff like that. And you know, everyone has passports and. America, we're not really driven to get our passport. We're not really driven to go outside of the country. Because what we see on TV from fucking National Geographic is that you see some African women butt ass naked with the titties hanging out. Or to your <laughs> point, you know, you, you, you see they show. Uh, that's freaking, really like profound, actually. It's a good point. <laughs> you know, and, yeah, it's, you know, it's true. Like, you know, I'm not, if they describe Asia, they, they're showing fucking rice patties. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Um, which is fucked up. You know, no doubt that's probably there. But that's not what's really there. You know what I'm saying? And to your point, it's a developed, you know, other side of the world. And um, the exposure and I think the ignorance and the lack of us really educating ourselves on the rest of the world and traveling. You know, I, I applaud you. I think what you're doing is huge. It's fantastic. Um, it's actually infectious. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's a, it's a great, great thing to hear you do that. So when you finally find your bus after 30 minutes wandering around the airport, like, the first day at work, you know, could you say you went to you went to, to go teach English, right? So you already had a yeah, job yeah. lined up. I did, yeah. So like, I had uh, I had a note that was written for me in Korean <laughs> on a piece of paper, <laughs> and I just gave it to like I just gave it to people until I figured out well, where the bus was, like where to get on, and then I eventually gave it to a bus driver. I took like a four and a half hour bus ride. I eventually got to the place that I was staying. Um, after like 44 hours of travel combined or something like it was crazy like oh in gosh. terms of how long it took because you're going through i mean yeah you're well 44 hours including including the the 14 hour jump ahead in time i guess but right. like just ridiculous swing in terms of how long you're you're going for and what day you end up in you know what i mean it's just crazy <laughs> um crazy. but yeah like eventually i i met up with the uh the <clears throat> the uh administrator of the language school um who i still can keep, keep in touch with to this day um super good dude uh we had our we had our challenges working together but ultimately like was a really good relationship and uh yeah got there and then the first day of school man like there was a south african dude that was leaving my 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 teaching post and he kind of pulled me through a training session which was very like insignificant um and i had taken like a, a course on how to teach english before i went there but like you know, you never really figure it out until you start doing shit, right? So, right. I just jumped in, man. I, I taught. Luckily, I taught uh, 
at a private academy. So like I had smaller classes. So my first class was like three or four girls and uh they're so cute man like koreans are so cute in general man <laughs> like it's just uh it's i love i just love like the culture uh i really fell in love with it korea still feels like it feels like my real second home because like uh like i made my new self that i've carried with me to this day in korea so i feel like when you do that you really you ultimately end up connecting with the place and uh yeah i lived there for a year and a half man it's all that school and then Ultimately, like I knew it was time to move on, but it was uh, it was a different type of moving on, man. Like you know, moving on from like the corporate life and like getting out of Colorado and all that shit felt like there was serious like urgency associated with it. After Korea, it felt like okay, like I've finished a chapter and now like now it's like a progression onto the next thing. Mm. So what was that next thing for you? So my dreams were before I left the states as well. Is like I didn't want to die without being completely fluent in Spanish. without like living in latin america and then without uh exploring whether or not i wanted to be a scuba dive master or a marine biologist i still like had that childhood dream cuz like i just always loved scuba nice. diving i scuba dove when i grew up <clears throat> and i just loved the ocean man so i went and volunteered with this marine uh biology conservation outfit for 5 weeks in indonesia actually back where i'm at now but on the other side of the country in this place called rajam pat um and I scuba dove for 3 days or three times a day for 5 weeks in a row and I took like I, they taught me how to take like uh surveys of the reef and the marine wildlife and everything and I lived on this deserted island and I just uh I just lived in paradise and scuba dove and I I really wanted to like explore cuz I was like all right maybe I'll become a dive master after this English teaching thing and I'll just maybe I won't leave Indonesia and I'll just post up here but then I realized through doing that that like that I didn't really want to do that but it was cool to like tick that box cuz I would have always had that itch you know what I mean absolutely um, so that was one thing and then when I, and then after that I went to Colombia so when I first got to Colombia I lived in Cartagena for 2 months um with a family and I took uh, intense language school I already had like a decent background in Spanish but like there was definitely like some shit holding me back from from being fluent and a lot of that was uh really just just that was also fear <laughs> of just sounding <laughs> stupid and, and just like really not being able to dive into a language i feel like that's that's the number one thing that holds most people back but that's another topic of discussion but anyway i, I dove into spanish and i was just like man i'm going to fucking learn this i'm going to live in colombia and this is like where i'm going to be and then i i ended up living in medellin uh for like four and a half years so i i eventually made my way to medellin uh i i made a girlfriend shortly thereafter um we ended up dating for like about 4 years almost she didn't speak that great of english when we met so that was like really good for my language skills i became right. fluent in spanish i started my business there figured out that i didn't have to go home and sleep on my mom's couch and i was going to figure this shit out and uh yeah man that was that was kind of how that evolved <clears throat> so How did you find a family in Colombia? Like you just like a, like a foreign exchange student? <laughs> like how, how did I fucking work? <laughs> yeah, actually exactly. So they have language schools um where you can go and study Spanish. And um a lot of those language schools have an option to either put you up in like your own apartment or to put you up with a family. And um <clears throat> I was just you know i didn't really want to live with family necessarily because it's uncomfortable and it feels weird but like i did want to live with the family because it's uncomfortable and it feels weird <laughs> and i knew it was going to help me with my spanish um so i ended up living with them i still i still keep in touch with them actually man so like uh it was cool it was like a it, i had like a an immediate family with like the mom and dad and two brothers um i uh, i reconnected with the brothers like a couple times in uh in uh Colombia and then also in the states I saw one of them in my in Miami which was dope and then uh yeah two little girls and an aunt and an extended family that all like really embraced me and uh yeah they still hit me up on Facebook all the time man they're messaging me they they're always checking in a lot of a lot of love there man so it ended up being super dope man it was really really a blessing no that that's fantastic um you know i think what I'm hearing so far and for a lot of people i think hopefully they're here too so far in this conversation i hear a lot of being uncomfortable 
you was always uncomfortable, but you didn't let that stop you. And you actually put yourself in a position to be uncomfortable and continue to push on. <clears throat> I, I, I got to applaud you for that. It's amazing. A lot of people don't want to take that, that chance on themselves. Yeah, man. Um, I appreciate that. I <laughs> Sometimes I think it's like kind of sadistic, but like I, <clears throat> I chase that and I like, I just dive into like the, the things that I know are going to make me feel weird. Even when I left Columbia last July, like I left again because I reached another like phase of mediocrity in my life. And uh, I ex exited my previous relationship because it was just like neutral and too many people die like that, man. And I've had so many like different iterations where I've like, I've left situations like that and I've sought out discomfort. And I'm not saying that I'm like better than anyone <laughs> to do that. Like, it's just in me. And like, that's how, that's how I, that's how I work. And I can't physically like live in the same situation for too long without having to move on. And like, without just knowing deep down that like the only way to move forward is to face some shit that, that that hurts it's going to cause like some pain some discomfort and then you're going to grow from that and and every time man like i do end up growing and and it it doesn't feel like always the right move at the time because it's associated with like <clears throat> awkwardness and feeling weird and um you know putting yourself out there and like you don't feel strong in those moments and and it's crazy to look back to be like wow in the moments of like my greatest weakness and my greatest struggle, like I'll, that's when I was actually the strongest. And like, that's how I know that, that, that that's, that's right. And that's like what really what's commendable. It's not like, you know, all the charisma and the confidence and the bravado that comes from having gone through that shit. Cause like, that's like, that's where you end up. You know what I mean? Like the process is like where the like actual strength lies. Absolutely. And I think it sounds like you're in love with the process altogether. Not so much the end result. Like you said, you know, you had the itch for, you know, for scuba diving and being a marine bi biologist and you did that and you're like, oh, well, I scratched it and it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So, but you can just check it off your bucket list. You know, and um, your um, tenacity to go into, you know, to Colombia and to learn Spanish and then uh, full immersion, I think, is the best way anyway, right? So, because it forces you to to learn it, you know, you're not kind of pussyfooting around with a uh, a fucking tape or, or or a CD trying to learn Spanish on on your phone or something, you know. You, yeah. It, once you're around the culture too, I think and that's any culture. Once you're in it, and you you know, especially like since you're around a family, you're forced to respond and to learn and to listen. Like you really have to be observant. Um, how long did it take you to to be fluent uh, with the family and and your surroundings in Spanish? Yeah, man, that's a good question, too. Um, I think, like, I mean, I grew up, like, almost, like, half my hometown in Colorado, actually, is, like, Hispanic these days. Um, and, like, I grew up with a ton of Mexican kids. So I was always, like, around Spanish. And I was in even bilingual class when I was, like, 11. But you don't really, you don't really, like, learn until, like, they make you speak. It's kind of interesting, too. Like, I'm passionate about, you know, maybe a future project of mine will be, like, trying to teach how to like actually do full immersion because like you got to make people speak and you got to put them into like the actual situations where it happens but it probably took like so those two months of like intense intense spanish study like really leveled up my game like within that period of time i was able to go from like an intermediate like a solid intermediate level in spanish which i think most people can get to pretty easily by the time they graduate high school going through like a normal spanish course in terms of like your grammar and everything and then I got right. to a very advanced level in terms of understanding, like, how everything in the grammar structure worked. Like, <clears throat> I think there's something to be said for just, like, learning a language through speaking it first. But also, um, there's definitely something to be said for, like, learning, like, the ins and outs of, like, how a sentence is, like, structured and put together. And, like, the core things that you need to understand there. Like, for me, like having that framework really made it easier. So like I knocked out like all the grammar rules and I was like, okay, cool. Like I get it. I know how to conjugate every single verb. I understand every single tense. Like I, I get, I get this. And then, and then I had the foundation to be like, okay, now I just need to up my vocabulary and like, and really just get over the fear associated with speaking. That's the biggest thing too. And just like not sounding stupid. Um, so it probably took me like, <clears throat> probably took me a year to get to the point where i was confident enough to say that i'm fluent in spanish but realistically i was i was probably fluent earlier now uh i'm i'm fluent in spanish i mean 
uh, it doesn't it doesn't go away once you once you hit a level. I'm, I'm a little rusty sometimes. Like I was jamming with a Colombian homie the other day, and I was just like, you know, forgetting words and shit. But that happens. But it it comes back pretty quick. So you you have this this four year stay in Colombia. Where do you go to next? Um. So while I was in Colombia, I did have like a couple stints in and out of Colombia. So when I first got to Colombia, I went back to uh. I was in there. I was there for like seven or eight months. Um, and ironically enough, like I was thinking about leaving Medellin because like it didn't really call to me. And I met, I met my my ex girlfriend, um, my my girlfriend at the time, like two weeks before I left Colombia. And I was just like, you know what? There was some sparks there that probably makes sense to explore. But I went back to Colorado for three months. I lived in Denver, and then I went back to Medellin. Um, so she was like. Uh, she was like a sign, man. She was another sign of like discomfort, uh, uh, of like, wow, like maybe there's something there. And it wasn't just her. It was like the, the draw to like continue with the lifestyle that I started. Cause otherwise like I might've just stayed in Colorado again. So it's like, it's interesting, man. Like things will pull you back to what you used to know and they'll pull you back to your default. You have to keep fighting against that. So she was like a sign. So I went back down after that and then lived there straight for like a year. Um, you know, had a lot of interesting experiences. Um, and then her and I actually uh, made the decision to, to go to Sri Lanka. She got an internship in Sri Lanka and I really wanted to come back to Asia. Um, so she had an internship in this part of the world for six months. So we left Colombia, did that, then went back to Colombia, um, which was super cool. And then after that, uh, we were in Colombia for like another six or seven months and I wanted to go back to Colorado again. So we went, went back and lived in Boulder the summer and then went back to Colombia and then I was in Colombia for like two years straight before I decided to finally finally leave and then ultimately like uh I I ended up breaking up with my my ex-girlfriend we just mutually kind of parted ways um and are still super good homies to this day which not something I've been able to pull off in previous relationships which is cool <laughs> right and then uh <clears throat> yeah and then I I was in Barcelona last summer. I mean, I'm everywhere, dude. Like, my <laughs> there's so many like ridiculous things in terms of like where I've been and and what I've done. So like, uh, it takes a while to to document it all. But basically, I left Medellin last July. I was in Barcelona for three months. I was in Thailand for three and a half months after that. Um, I went to Vietnam a little bit, and then I I came down to Bali, and Bali just felt right in terms of a place that I needed to be situated again. And right now, life is about. Um, Life is about like finding a little bit more grounding uh, in terms of where I'm at uh, geographically. So I just kind of settled on Bali. Like I'm, I'm in Bali right now. I'm developing a new crew of like really heart centric, like spiritually focused people. Uh, Pulling a bunch of other digital entrepreneurs over here, so it's a real good crew. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of how it how it's all gone down. <clears throat> that's fantastic, bro. Like that sounds great. It's freaking amazing. I love it. I guess I had to ask you this too, though. Like. You traveled back and forth different countries. What was the acceptance, you know, of you coming in not knowing the language, um, not knowing understanding the culture? What um what tactic did you use to like, you know, I guess to to humble yourself? You know, because as we all know, like Hollywood plays Americans to be these cowboys. And the rest of the world kind of has that we have that stigma, right? As being a yeah, cowboy. Yeah. Um, what did you do to kind of guess soften that? Or what was your soft skills like? A couple opposite sides of this because um when i was in korea like my main focus i actually i actually learned a ton of korean like i i still speak decent korean and i pick it back up when i'm able to jam with my korean homies um and by the time i left korea i was i was really good at korean um but i dove into that like i really wanted to explore that culture like that was very like very very important to me and i learned so much about korea and i went to every city in korea basically and just like really really dug in um but then when i went to medellin like i dug into the culture a little bit i obviously learned spanish but once i learned spanish and kind of like got that box checked i mean i was also living it so i was dating colombian girls so it wasn't hard for me to like just be around things that were kind of incorporating me into the culture right Right. Um, but it, it did become like less of a priority because like i was focused on business so like all my friends were like digital digital nomads and entrepreneurs and i have some really good colombian homies but most of my best friends uh since that point in my international journey are uh are either like americans canadians or like uh 
you know, people from Europe or lots of different countries, but they, you know, we communicate in English and we live this, like, we live in like a little bit more of a bubble lifestyle, but I do that consciously. I still like in Indonesia, like I still interact with locals. I have a great time, but I don't, I'm not as intentional about like becoming a part of their culture as I have been in the past. And like, I think that's, I think it's fine as long as you do it consciously. Um, but it's, it's not as important to me. So I'm living a little bit more of a bubble lifestyle now than I did before. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't interact and like do things, um, you know, and sometimes it's easier. Like Asia's really different. So it's not always easy to like, just jump into that necessarily. Like in Barcelona, it's a very international city. Plus like a lot of the Catalonians and like they're European. So like you kind of like figure out that flow a little uh, more organically, I guess. Um, yeah. I don't know. So like, I guess the way that I would sum up my answer to your question is like, it's very dynamic. Like, uh, you know, I try to be very respectful. Obviously I try to like, at least learn how to say hello, please. Thank you. You know, how are you? <laughs> right. Stuff like that. I'm always fucking around with like local people. Bali in general, man, is ridiculous. Like there's, it's just like the, the ultimate land of smiles. Like people here are so nice. Like the locals are so, so nice. So it's, it's always cool to jam with them, but but in Bali proper, like everybody speaks enough English, so they're jamming with you. This is like <laughs> Bali's like beyond on the map. Like this place is also a huge, huge right. destination. It actually is for the people who know. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's get into your your business ventures. Um, you're an entrepreneur. You know, you're doing these great travels. You you're living in a, in a beautiful, wonderful country. So what are you doing exactly on the internet? Yeah, man. So my main hustle, um, like <clears throat> when I first went abroad, um, like when I was in Colombia, uh, I had a decent amount of money saved up actually by the time I got to Colombia. So I had, I had like, uh, I was stressed. I wanted to make money obviously because my bank account was just going down, but I had, you know, I had enough money to like keep me living in Colombia for like two years with the budget that I had. So I was just like, all right, like I can at least figure out what to do here. Um, but I was, uh, I was trying to figure out how to make money online. <clears throat> and I wrote like an ebook and I was trying to sell that and I was taking some courses and long story short, like my friend at the time, another dude that I grew up with who ended up becoming my business partner, um, was in a cafe one day and he was on a, there's, there's websites, there's a website called upwork.com, which maybe you can put in your show notes. Yeah. Um, that uh, used to be two websites called odesk.com and elance.com. And it's basically a platform where you can sign up as a graphic designer or a web developer or a writer or whatever and offer your services and people will hire you. Um, so we were hiring people off there to do like little graphic design jobs for us with these projects that we were trying to put together. But then we realized that, you know, we weren't making any money and we were paying money to these graphic designers and these writers to like do things for us. So one day my friend was like, man, like, I wonder if I made a profile as a freelancer, like what I could do. And like, maybe someone would pay me for that. <clears throat> so he made a profile as a freelancer. This is another, like, it was another, like another mental leap in life. Cause it was like an aha moment. Like, Oh shit. Like, yeah, why don't we just, like, we're both good at selling. Like, we could sell jobs and we could just find other people to do them. So what we started doing is we pretended like we were writers um, or marketers doing certain things that people were asking for. <clears throat> and we got jobs. The first job that my business partner laid down, I mean, he convinced the dude to give him $5,000 for this project where basically it required, like, some writing of some emails uh, and a little bit of web development work. Nothing that we could do ourselves um, in terms of what he needed. Um, probably the writing if we really would have dug into it, but we immediately hired that out. So we found a web designer, uh, we found a writer, and we basically just started managing these projects. <clears throat> and we just started hustling online, man, and selling them to people, and then putting the team together that would actually fulfill the work, right? Um, so that was that was hustle number one, man, and that ultimately turned into a business where I recognized that people bought writing. Um, that's like what I started selling online. And I was just like, you can, you can sell writing. People will actually pay for writing, um, uh, of like various sorts. So eventually we ended up <clears throat> creating a service that's a monthly content writing subscription. So people can come to us, uh, and they basically buy 
a package of words. So if they want to do blog posts, case studies, press releases, whatever, there's some people that have podcasts like you, for example, that like give us a transcription and they're like, yo, this episode was really dope. Turn it into like an actual blog post, but don't just have the transcription, right? Like make it look like interview style, pull out the highlights, make it look badass and like write an article around it. Um, so we do, we do a lot of stuff like that. Um, and we primarily work with like digital marketing, SEO agencies and other businesses that want to fulfill those services. So like I said, it's a monthly recurring subscription service. We have about 50 customers on board right now. Uh, we have two full-time employees, about a hundred independently contracted writers, um, and myself and my business partner. And we've had like a lot of different variations of what that's looked like over the years. Um, but that's, that's been the main hustle. Um, so that's, that's pretty stable and it's very cool to have gotten it to where it is right now. Um, and we're in the process of just kind of letting that do its thing, man. So that's, that's number, that's, that's really what's gotten me here. <clears throat> that sounds freaking amazing. I love the fact that you guys really freaking hustled that shit and said, Hey, I don't, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I'm gonna hire somebody who fucking does that. That's fucking genius. That's, that's, that's smart as hell, you know? Um, but that's how you do it. You know, you that you have that innate hustle in you to say, "Yo, I, we got this. We're freaking freaking figure it out." Like, I think that's the biggest thing, right? When you challenge yourself, you take on something, whether you know how to do it or not. It's almost like you have, you know, you fake it till you make it, right? Yeah, dude. And I think with certain areas of life, that can be more challenging than others for some people, right? But like, business yeah. is a tough one, man. Business seems really elusive, like. I remember when, you know, when figuring out how to make a hundred dollars a month online seemed like, you know, impossible, man. Just like people, like I, I grew up in a family of entrepreneurs, but I didn't get taught like the entrepreneurial gene. I didn't wait. I didn't like grow up like selling baseball cards and shit. Like I had to like, <laughs> right. you know, I had to yeah. learn that and that's cool. But like, it holds you back so much when you get older and you're like, oh, I wasn't the kid that like, like you look at Gary Gary V and Gary shit. V. You look at like yeah. I do I do like his story and you're like, ah, oh, but I wasn't really like that growing up. It's like, okay, well fucking figure out like what your hustle is and be like that. You don't have to say like I wasn't like that, so I can't become that. Like that's what that's the thing that is the biggest mind fuck that will just keep you stuck there. It's like, okay, cool. You said you're not that, so you'll never be that. Absolutely. No, I think I, I totally agree with you. I think when people hear a story like, like Gary V's, which I'm a huge fan of Gary V, I love him to death. Um, but I think people almost make him like, you know, this godlike dogma, right? And, um, and to your point, you have to find your baseball card. You know, his was literal, but yours has to be figurative and say, hey, you know what? What is my baseball card now? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't sell yeah. baseball cards either. We're eight fucking years old in a mall in fucking New Jersey. <laughs> but, you know, what can I do now? What is my baseball card? You know, and I think a lot of people don't do not do that for, enough for themselves. And if they're too involved in looking at somebody else's path and journey, you know, they're kind of at the, on the sidelines looking around and looking at the race instead of being inside the race. And you've chosen to, to get inside the race from a very young age. And, whether you knew you was doing something right or wrong, it felt right to you in your gut, every move you made. So, and you didn't worry about satisfying anybody else around you, you know, even to a point like, you know, your dad was like, oh, you're stupid. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> but for you, it was all about you and all about how you want to fulfill your life. You know, and I give you kudos to that. That's, that's huge because many people die an unfulfilled life. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, now with your business, oh, yeah. Which, yeah, you know, now with your business, it's a, it's an amazing thing. You know, you go, you're grinding, you figure it out like, to your point. Like, you know, to try to figure out how to make money online, it's, it's there, you know, even for myself, like with the podcast, you know, I have, I have sponsors and everything, which is fantastic, but you have to figure things out. You have to know how to get it done. You have to know how to keep it going. You, know, you got to put the you work in. You just do. Yeah. You got to do, man. You have to, you have to be fucking consistent and because your story, and, and the, the reason why I'm saying all this is just to really get down to a couple of things is you were very consistent, right? And even to the point that you knew when you were stagnant, that you knew you had to move because you got comfortable. You're like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm here a little too long. There's not feeling good. I got to make my next move. And it wasn't like you were running away from anything. You just knew like this, this isn't right. This isn't it. This isn't truly home. 
I think a lot of people don't understand, like, home is not really where you're born. It's, it's, you can make home anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have to really find that place where you feel zen-like. You feel like you're at peace. You know, so what do you do to keep yourself at peace? You know, you're, you're tens of thousands of miles away from your your family. Of course, you probably have your, your Bali family there with you, of course. What makes you not miss them enough to say, I got to go back home? Man, that's a tough one, dude, because I do miss them. And, um, you know, I think like in the States, our family, our family lives in a lot of ways are much more fragmented than other cultures. So we grow up, we grew up with less community in that sense. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, I mean, you, you, you spend time in different countries, even developed different countries like Korea or whatever. Like it's so much more about the family unit um than it is in the states so like i think that's a little lost on our culture which i do think is like um uh, i think that's a negative thing um to be honest with you you know yeah. um absolutely i think like that community and that support is super important um so I, I i do have that i do miss them um i try to go back when i can i mean i've gone back like at least once or twice a year every year since i've been gone and i, I cherish that time uh when i'm back when i'm back with them um, but my family is also a little fragmented, like I said, so it's not like I'm with everybody at one time. So it's a different type of like homecoming for me. Um, but, um, but yeah, man, I mean like, so, so like, I, I really believe in like, um, just like the energy that you put out is like the energy that's going to come back to you. Right. And like, I've always been, I think one of one of the biggest skills about myself that I've noticed is that I'm always able to manifest like uh, like a very caring and amazing group of people around me. Um, you know, like I got to Bali and uh, like at the end of December, my birthday is January 9th. You know, I somehow like manifested a group of like really hard centric caring individuals of like 10 people that went to dinner with me on my birthday. Like, um, so I just... I just try to show up, you know, be charismatic, meet people, but like, you know, not be anything other than, than what I am and just attract the type of people that are going to come into my life. So people are really important, man. Like that support and like being able to like interact is really dope. But then also like just trying to be spiritually grounded in like, uh, what I'm doing moving forward, man. So like I, I write on Instagram every day. Like I just kind of like try to get like at least a thought out every day of like, you know, things associated with vulnerability stuff like associated with change things holding me back something that i'm trying to be really honest about with people that could potentially help them um and like through like those various practices you know i think uh i think that really helps me um uh, kind of like develop like a sense of of being and a sense of like being uh grounded um but i won't my friend gave me this really good analogy man he's like there are certain times in life where you're you're gonna feel he's like imagine life as a river and there are certain times in life really all of life is like this but there are certain times in life where you're gonna feel like crazy loss but regardless like you're floating down the middle of the river by yourself and you just got your feet in front of you and you're cruising right and that's that's your natural state that's what you're always doing but sometimes you're gonna recognize that you're doing that and you're gonna feel very alone and you're gonna start struggling and you're gonna start floundering around fucking swimming in the water and you're going to swim to the edge and you're going to try and grab onto a branch but you're not going to be able to get out of the river that branch is going to you're going to rip some fucking soil up that shit's going to fall into the water and like the more you struggle the more ridiculous it's going to look and the, the less of a chance that you're actually going to be able to get out of that river because the river is life so the, the thing is to like figure out what what grounds you take a deep breath put your hands on your chest and be like I might not have this, but like, I got me, like, you know, I got me, like, I'm, as long as I'm, I'm just chilling here with my feet forward, like, this is the direction that life is going. And like, that's what's taking me. So that, things like having friends that tell me analogies like that, like when I'm going through shit or when I do feel like a little, uh, a little like ungrounded, like really do help me kind of like come back to it. Like, dude, cause the other thing is like, I go through all those struggles, man. I have like, have i still experience bouts of loneliness or depression or like where i fucking don't want to go to the gym or like whatever and then i have the, these crazy euphoric moments man where i'm like on top of the world so like life is life in terms of like the emotions that that one experiences don't necessarily change it's just how you how you deal with them man that's 
that's in, that's insightful as fuck, bro. That's I love that shit. And you're absolutely right, though. Like you know, you're gonna have your ups and downs. Um, do you ever feel when you go back home to visit, though, that do you become envious of any of your friends or family members, cousins or whatever, you know, siblings or whatever, that um, of what they have, whether they have a family of their own, children, wife, <laughs> marriage, house, dog, pick a fence type shit? You know, like, do you ever feel like, hey, um, damn, am I missing out or, or are they missing out? Yeah, dude. So I went to a wedding last February with one of my best friends from college. Um, and uh, I I was fortunate enough to go to college with one of my best friends that I grew up with as well. And he was there and we were having a conversation. And uh, every time I go back and I get to see him and his family and his, his wife and his kids, because I'm 33 now, so I'm beyond the point where like my friends are getting married. Like they're like they're into like second and third children, you know, sometimes right. they're in like <laughs> second and third children. And second houses and moving on to like even different shit but um but i i would always go back and be like man like they've got it they've got like a a dope ass life like it's very like i'm very envious because you know they've they've got the house like everything's structured you know like life is a little crazy but they're very grounded in terms of like their routine they've got their kids they seem like very loving and happy um but i was talking to my boy man and it was uh it wasn't that he was envious of me necessarily, but like uh, he said a couple of things during our conversation that 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 made me realize. I mean, you know, he's 33 years old at that time as well, um, and he's had the same job since he graduated college. Like he's one of those dudes that actually kind of got on a path that and and got on a good path, and like was able to crush and make a lot of money, and that company has treated him really well. Um, but he's been doing the same shit for 10 years, right? And right. he's not he's not upset about that, but I could tell that. Like he said a couple of things that were just like, there was, uh, there were pieces of his own being that like, he hasn't been able to reconnect with in a long time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like selfishly speaking, there were parts of him that were also gone. So as much as I envy or like, like the idea of the life that he has sometimes, um, you know, he might not be directly envious of my life. Uh, sometimes. He should be because my life's pretty badass. But <laughs> it um, is. <laughs> but but like the idea of like the self exploration that I'm able to do, he's not able to do. Um, and I think sometimes I lack in terms of like showing my generosity and sharing that with the world and serving more in a way that like is directly impactful to others. Like I like you know he has like a family unit where he can do that every day, but at the same time he can't. He can't dig into him to figure out what the fuck's going on there, man. And there's, I think that that is like a slippery slope. Cause like, I think you have to balance that regardless. Otherwise that's how you end up with like a, a fucking midlife crisis or, or even a later life crisis. And that's, that's ultimately how you die with regrets. And I, uh, that scares me more than anything. No, I agree with that. And I think you said, you just said something about you no know, balance. And I think people confuse the word balance as 50, 50, you know, I think, you have to really find your balance, which it could be 70, 30, 80, 20, mm. 60, 60, 40, you know? And I think as Americans and as a culture, we think of balance as 50, 50 as, you know, your wife or significant other, whoever it is, that's the other half of you. Yeah. You're, you're supposed to be treating yourself as one whole. So you're still treating yourself as a half of something that you need another person to complete you. So, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, so we, we need to make sure we know who we are first as a whole, before we can even invite someone else in our lives, and hopefully they're whole too, because if they're just another half of something, you got a whole of nothing. <laughs> so, and I think like what you're doing now, you're making yourself whole. Like you're really going out there, challenging yourself, when exploring, having a blast, having fun. You know, but you touch on being spiritual a lot and really finding that. And um, a lot of people don't, don't, not that they don't have the opportunity, but I think like you know. Life just kind of passes them by without knowing it. No, absolutely, man. And I think like, I think that's the, that's the danger in, in privilege and comfort is like, I don't know, you're not able to get the perspective, um, that you ultimately need to like dive into some of this stuff unless you, yeah, unless you, you, you swing a little bit, man. And, um, I don't know, man, I just think, I just think if we grow up in a situation where we do have like, uh, like 
like privilege and opportunity to explore these things, then we should. Because there are a lot of people that don't, man. I'm not going to say that anybody could do what I do or like come from like whatever background they're coming and end up like exactly where I'm at right now. Cause like I've learned enough about life to realize that everybody's incarnation is like unique and it's, it's there for a reason. And it's like, not everybody has to do this. It's, it's whatever, man. But if you do have the ability to like step out and impact people, um, like you should explore that shit. Like if, if you do have the ability to do what, what I'm doing, for example, and like really dive into some stuff, I think ultimately like you get to a place where you can help more people. And, you know, that's, that's, that's the mission that I'm on. No, you're right. But I think, and to your point, the biggest thing is that you really helped yourself first, right? It's, it's all about self care. Yeah. Yeah. And you, yeah, you actually, uh, no, go no, ahead. Just real, quick, real quick on your point. Cause you were talking about relationships and like how you have to find yourself as a whole first. And I forgot that that's one thing I wanted to touch on that. I agree with you on is like, uh, if you're not okay with, with yourself then like you're never going to be okay with anything external like all the answers are inside of you eventually like you can combine that with like the external world in a way that feels like very synchronistic and like feels like it's in harmony right but yeah if you're not if you're not okay with you man then don't even don't even bring that shit around to other people if like <laughs> right. if you're just gonna fuck their shit up like be exactly. conscious about that too and, and but that's what we do though, right? Because we're, we're taught from a very young age. You know, girls already have baby carriages from two to three years old, right? So they're yeah. already they're already taught, you know, without even them knowing that hey, you're gonna be bearing children, <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? Yeah. They get the whole kitchen sets already pre-made for them and everything at a young age, and we find that kind of cute. But we're already conditioning them to think of a certain way. Then boys have the same thing, you know. I know when I was growing up, you know, you, you bought a cowboy's and Indian suit and you had your little guns and you're the man or you had a construction hat on with your little hammer or your tools and you kind of predetermine exactly what you're going to do. And then yep. I think that's where the confusion for a lot of people are. And I think America is a, 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 America is so young, right? It's, I, I really consider America as being a teenager right now, trying to figure itself out. And as people are, are, are really at, at, at kind of a, the other ends of, of themselves trying to figure out what am I going to do that's outside of the confines of what the people are telling me I'm supposed to be in. This box you keep on explaining to me that I can have the American dream. Where really is that though? I think what you're doing, you're living the American dream outside of America. That was the whole purpose of you know being American where you can have the freedom to do what the fuck you want. And we have to stop thinking that the rest of the world is not free. <laughs> you know, there's always yeah. diff- there's always different versions of free, of how free you really are in confines of laws and things like that. But that's where the mindset has to come to and you have to really figure things out and the self-care becomes first. And that's not that's not taught. You know, that's not explained because you look at your parents, I know my parents are screwed the fuck up and they screwed me up a little yeah. bit. You know, everyone is because again, it's it's the lineage thing. You get you get taught in this chain of uh, this family history it keeps on being prominent, you know, from generation to generation. So someone like yourself breaks that chain and says, "Hey, this is not going to be the status quo for me. You can keep it if you want to, mom and dad. Love you to death, but I'm not going to take hold of this chain anymore and drag it on." You know, yeah. so you doing your self care, you um really forming your Bali family or, the, or your family that you want to have around you that you're creating, I think it's fantastic. You know, it's definitely something to look at and to model, you know, and I think that's where people need to understand is um, to take what you're saying here from a spiritual sense, to even to an entrepreneurial sense. And like I said, you know, not everyone needs to be an entrepreneur because not everyone can be an entrepreneur, right? So yeah. if a career is your thing, then you got to be a thousand percent into that and be the best you can and be the best subject matter expert you can know who your stakeholders are and, and just take it away and be who you need to be. But the other end of that spectrum, like I said earlier, is that you got to know holistically who you are as a whole and there's knowing half of who you are is just confusing as fuck, you know? Yeah, so, Hell yeah. you know, so spiritually, what are you doing spiritually for yourself at this moment? Like, you know, you get up in the morning, like you have a routine, you just get up, you just let the environment hit you. Like, what are you doing exactly? 
yeah so spirituality is like such a (laughs) it's such a general term and i think people interpret it in a lot of different ways but like one of the things like i've experimented experimented with like a lot of different things spiritually in terms of practices that i can use for uh mindfulness or whatever one of those things is meditation um i do that every morning um but yeah usually i walk up i wake up in the morning man like i pound a, a glass of a water with some salt and lemon in it um to kind of like replenish some of the fluids and minerals that the body lost before and then i get outside immediately Bali, it's cool because it's usually nice and sunny and tropical and i go for a morning walk for like 10 or 15 minutes and uh on that walk man i just try to think about what i'm grateful for and i try to say that out loud a lot of times and just kind of like get into like a nice flow try to just force myself to smile because in the morning at first like that's not always the easiest thing to do now when i'm done with that i uh yeah meditate for 20 minutes uh every day and that just kind of like helps me clear my mind sometimes i'll do like some some Wim Hof like breathing exercises either before or after I meditate. I explore like how I feel on either end of that. And then when I'm done with that, man, I, uh, I dance, <laughs> I put on, I put on this playlist that I have and then I fucking dance and I clean up my, my room and I get ready for the day. And, uh, then I'm just, I'm just trying to get into like higher vibrations, man. Um, cause I think a lot of spirituality is just associating, like figuring out like where your mental state is and then how to like, get it to a level that you want to be at so i just try to put myself like in the happiest state that i've ever been like i think back to like the happiest and most joyous that i've ever been and i'm like okay cool how can i get there because like spirituality spirituality to me in a lot of ways is also like trying to figure out how to because if you're being if you're joyful you're closer to being enlightened and you're experiencing positive emotions you're bringing that in and like enlightenment you know, if we're talking about like a, like a stereotypical spiritual journey is like, that's, that's where you get to, right. Everything just right. is. Um, and you're able to take things that are good or bad and just like maintain this constant state of like a little bit of, you know, a little bit of smile on each end of your mouth. And like, you're just, you're just staying like a constant state of joy, no matter what hits you, man. So that's been really cool. And then also like, uh, I mean, I read a lot. Um, I, I read a lot of Ram Dass, like Alan Watts, those type of dudes, like their some of their old talks, especially Ram Dass, um, is, is really cool. Um, I've really, like, really gotten to the point where I think everything, everything we experience, um, is a spiritual, is an opportunity for spiritual awakening. Right. So like, right. like I believe that our, I believe that we're human for a reason. I believe that God created form for a reason. I believe that we're living out like our current incarnations for a reason and that like i, I used to just like spend I've, I've gone through a couple periods of time where i've spent like a month or two like not talking to anyone and just meditating and getting super deep and writing and got into like a state of like crazy bliss and just haven't even wanted to interact with people because i've been like dude this is it i should just fucking go to nepal and like live in the himalayas with them and become a monk like i've literally thought about that before because this feels so good right Right. And then I interact with like my crazy ass fucking brother or something. And he's drunk and giving me a call and fucking like calling me a piece of shit. And I'm <laughs> like, yo, this is not, this is not cool. This is not spiritual. But then when I started to recognize that that, those are the challenges. Those are the things that are like the most, the, the biggest opportunity for spiritual awakening is to like sit with those things and experience the real world. And listen to people like with real problems and talk about like all this shit that they're obsessed with in this, in this realm that we're living in. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so everything that happens during my day, man, I'm like, Oh, you know, that's interesting that this person feels like that. And like, my reaction is that this person's fucking ridiculous and that they're talking about shit that doesn't matter, but it's like, Oh, that's interesting. And then recognizing our emotions, like that made me feel like this. And then being like, Oh, that's interesting that you feel like that being able to step back from like, from just the way that we feel about things and looking at it a little bit more objectively. Sorry. That's like pretty roundabout, but like I've got a lot of exploration going on there. And then of course, like just posting on Instagram every day, like writing something that is on my mind. I mean, that's like getting over like the fear of doing that is, is an exercise in spirituality, writing something that like comes deep from my heart. That's actually what I think is an exercise in spirituality posting something even when i feel like i didn't like really post something or write anything that was very profound 
and not worrying about like what people are going to judge me for just because I'm getting that one thing out into the world um, and not needing it to be perfect. That's a spiritual exercise, you know, like dealing with business shit. Uh, that's a spiritual exercise. Like all of it, all of it is. Man, do you ever feel, you know, as your business continues to grow, um, it's going to change something in your life, right? Positive as far as when it's going to give you more money, it's going to grow. So you're going to feel you know happy about that, about growth. Have you thought about the time when it comes that your business is going to get larger, that it's going to interfere with your current lifestyle? Um, yeah, I have thought about that and I've actually, <laughs> I've, I've stopped growing my business. Like my business is what it is right now. And like, we're just kind of maintaining the current level and it's great. And like, I'm totally happy with that. So like, I'm, I'm not going to let it interfere with my current lifestyle because I know I have a better idea of what's important to me now. And I mean, there was crazy hustle and sacrifice required to get to where it is now that didn't allow me the time and the luxury to focus on some of the things that I do now. But I do question whether or not moving forward that that's actually the right way to go. Like, I think ultimately, like if we're going to find a path of true alignment, we have to find a thing that allows for us just to be who the fuck we are and like integrate it all in. You know what I mean? Because like, I need to get outside. I need to go for hikes sometimes. Like I need to be on top of mountains. I need to fucking sweat in the gym. Like I need to do yoga. I need to like, you know, uh, get down on a jam session with my homies and just laugh my ass off. Like I need all to right. go trip LSD and do mushrooms sometimes <laughs> and get out there. And like, I need to, I need to do all that. You know what I mean? So like, if I, if I can't do that, then I can't, I can't ultimately live like the life that I feel like I'm supposed to. Right. You ever, you have, have you ever felt maybe your upbringing, even being American, right? As American man, you know, when it really taught from a young age, don't cry when you skin your knee. Right. Mm. Um, get back up. Have you felt that challenging as you as you go deep in your spirituality and your emotions? Has any of that been difficult for you to try to say, hey, I, I need to let go and not be this so called macho man, this American cowboy? You know what I'm saying? Like, has you ever gone through that or has it been an easy transition for you? Yeah, dude, sometimes it's still hard. Like, I still feel like this, uh, this masculine exterior. Cause, like, I mean, if you look at like the shit that I post and like the conversations that I have, like, I'm much more vulnerable and willing to share my feelings than like a lot of, a lot of dudes. So, like, I've definitely made progress there, but there's still stuff that I'm like, oh, like, this makes me feel uncomfortable to share this. Or like, I feel like crying right now and I, I'm gonna hold in these tears because like, I don't wanna let them out. Um, yeah, I still experience that a lot. And I think like that's all just that's all just conditioning and pre programming. So like part of my part of my intention this year is to break into that more, man. Like I really wanna I still feel like there's shit that I haven't identified that I'm holding on to in my body in terms of past emotions or past experiences that I'm like, what can I do to like crack myself open more and like fucking cry a little bit or like get that shit out of me and like, you know, not 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 have like the the expectation around like you know the masculine the masculinity that we all grew up with feeling like we need to have uh kind of impeding on on my growth so for sure i think about that all the time yeah that's fantastic like you've you made a conscious decision to not let money run your life you understand you need it to to live your life <laughs> but you haven't allowed it to impede what you want to do and, and in fact it's even more empowering that with, you know, but you monetizing the way you're monetizing yourself is giving you the lifestyle that you're living now, which most people lives live, you know, paycheck to paycheck, and they're trying to keep up with the Joneses and they can't keep up, and it's insane that how you're doing it, the way you're doing it, um, and it works. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think people need to hear that this story more to understand what truly they need to do for themselves outside of just having a big old house and 20 TVs in there and a, and an Audi or a Beamer in a car and in a, in a, in a garage, you know? Yeah, man. And I don't think there's wrong, anything wrong with having the, the big house or the Beamer. No, I think it just not. depends on, it depends on like, it's like you said, man, like it depends on the person you are before you acquire those things. And I, I honestly believe that like spiritual work comes first. Like you can get, 
super wealthy and like i think you can do a lot of things like uh simultaneously like grant cardone is a good example of someone who's made a shit ton of money that is also you know in his own right deeply spiritual in the ways that like i think he's gone about doing doing what he does um so you know so there's different ways to go about it but i would argue that you know he probably went through a huge path of self like personal development, spiritual growth before like anybody knew anything about him. Um, so, so you never really know. And like, you you don't know what everyone's journey is like, but for me, the most important thing is like, like, I just don't believe that I'll ever acquire the amount of wealth that I'm capable of acquiring in life. If I don't have like that other shit lined up the way that it needs to be, you know, maybe you have already. I think wealth is just not monetary. Right. I think yeah be- between you you know learning different languages exploring it's a month day, dude it's a month day, dude you can't yeah. put a price on like on like where you get your mind to and that's no, also can't. like very profound absolutely you know so i think once overall as a culture here once we get over that that mighty old green dollar and understand that you know our wealth is more than just that and and really give ourselves up to this world and to, in, to ourselves to understand, well, what do I really need to live? Not just survive, you know, but to live comfortably and then enjoy myself, still have money in the bank, still save, invest properly, and, you know, do however I want to do. What can I do to do that? And um, oh, yeah. I think that's where we're off because we're, we're not taught that. We're just taught to keep on trying to survive. And, and the country's hurting for that that ideology of just trying to survive instead of trying to live. And if you look at other yes, countries, sir. you know, you look at other countries that they, they may have some things better than us. I think they even took a lot of you know pages from my book and uh, made it better. And we kind of got a little too cocky of ourselves and into ourselves. And um, for you to do what you're doing, you're just showing a prime example, like a model of, at, hey, it could work inside the country, it could definitely work outside the country because your, your life sounds fun as fuck. Um, <laughs> But the the biggest thing is, like you said, I can you know, you already know exactly what you want. You've decided, hey, I'm going to cut this cord on the growth of my company. You found, you know, a, a partner that is in agreement with you, which is rare as well. So kudos to you on that. Yep. And and you both are ready, like saying, you know what? Yeah, we. This is our decision. This is how we're going to live. This is how we're going to make our moves, and we're good. And in the day, if and when you want to really kick it up a notch, you can. It's, it's just up to you once that switch is flipped, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, oh, yeah. <clears throat> man, fantastic conversation, brother. Like, um, thank you so much for this, brother. Seriously. No, thank you, dude. I, I was, uh, yeah, that was good, dude. We got, we got a lot of, a lot of goodness in there, man. I, I really, uh, I will passionately share this with the world. Cause I think, uh, I think a lot of a lot of people should hear this episode. No, I I agree, man. I totally agree, man. Like, um, this is something that definitely I think people need to hear. Whether you're millennials, Generation X, whatever generation you're fucking from, I think this is what people need to hear to really understand. You know, what they need to do for themselves. This this can really make either someone's marriage better. This can either make someone's self understand themselves more and, and figure out what changes they need to make because you just can't fit this kind of cookie cut model anymore. I think those days are over. And I think a lot of people are screaming from within to really kind of burst at the seams of, hey, look at me, I'm unique and have different thoughts and I want to make different moves. Um, But I think a conversation like this is what they need to hear to get them to make those moves. To let them know it's okay whether your family agrees with you or not. And sometimes you're gonna have to leave them behind. But of course, maybe circle back. Um, So you make yourself whole. It's uh, so dude. Yeah, bro. I think this is fantastic, man. Uh, Tommy, thank you so much. I knew you know other side of the world. <laughs> um, and uh, you made the time out. I appreciate you coming to the Johnny Nomad podcast. We have to chop it up again really soon. You know, I wanna I want you to come back on and give us up- updates of what's going on. You know, maybe a few months from now, I don't know what I'm saying, but don't be a stranger. Um Absolutely. definitely not. And I I'll definitely keep in touch with you and um let people know where they can find you, man. Go ahead and give, give a shout out to all, all your handles on Instagram or Facebook, whatever you have. Yeah, man. So I have a I have a Facebook page which is actually linked to my Instagram. So it's uh, 
you, you can find me on there, but I'm, I'm more active on Instagram. And my, my Instagram is Tommy underscore joiner. So it's T O M M Y underscore J O I N E R. Uh, that's where you can find me on Instagram. I'm posting routinely every day. Uh, I have a lot of people DM me, uh, through some of the stuff that I post, tell me about what they're going through in life. And, uh, you know, I'm always willing to help. So like, don't feel, don't feel like a stranger in terms of reaching out. And then also one other new project that I'm working on is like, uh, my journey started out teaching English abroad, right? So I'm very passionate about helping people get, uh, jobs doing that. So I created a new website that's going to be up, uh, actually today. And it's called teach travel Um, and I'm helping people get certified to teach English abroad through that project, uh, specifically in providing really awesome information. So anybody that's interested in that avenue, I mean, it's the same one that I took to get me to where I'm here. That was my very first step. So like, I really encourage anyone to check that out and explore that as an opportunity. If, uh, if you're looking to either like escape the corporate grind or, uh, you know, just graduated college and, and trying to figure out how to avoid a lot of the shit that we just talked about. <laughs> right. That's fantastic. I think everyone needs to go ahead and jump on that website. Check it out. Definitely go to, to Tommy's IG is badass. Um, you will not be disappointed. Like, you know, what he, he talks about what he quotes. Um, it's some real shit. He's talking real shit. He's, he's giving you, his vulnerability up, up front. And like he said earlier, like, you know, not so many people are not to know of at all on IG really to fucking do that shit. So, uh, I heavily applaud you, brother. Like, fantastic <laughs> on that, bro. Fucking fantastic. So, I'm gonna let you go. You do your thing. Yeah. We're gonna keep in touch, though, man. I'm definitely gonna hit you up and make sure I check yes, up on sir. you. Um, but thank you so much for joining us, man. I appreciate you. Hell yeah, dude. So, uh, <laughs> so good to be here, Johnny. All right. Thank you, man. See you. Take care, brother.